Hello, this is Rebecca Renfro, and you are listening to Enigmatic Anomalies EA Radio. Welcome to Enigmatic Anomalies, EA Radio. I'm your host, Terry Ling, and tonight we'll be speaking with Sierra Skye. Sierra is an author and speaker, and also a spirit rescuer, as well as a paranormal investigator and Reiki master. She's also the creator of Spirit Rescuer's social media group. She was originally born in England and moved to America when she was 10 years old, and tonight She's our guest on EA Radio, so stay with us. We'll be right back. My name is Michael DeFord, and I'm the lead investigator for the Seekers Paranormal Society. About seven years ago, I had my first paranormal experience. Now armed with the latest in paranormal equipment, I'm setting out to find the truth. Joining me on my quest to capture evidence is my equipment tech, Ramon Beavis, and investigator Steve Welch. Take a front seat into our paranormal world as we are driven into the unknown. We are the Seekers Paranormal Society. SeekersParanormal.com For hundreds of years, those that have been curious enough to look to the stars in search of something beyond ourselves have been shunned, persecuted, and laughed at. Now, it's time for those curious few to laugh back Saucer Seekers is a hilarious online comic strip that takes a humorous look at our world of disinformation while facing everyday life from the point of view of those who devote their lives to the search for the truth. The Saucer Seekers! The SaucerSeekers.com Welcome back to EA Radio. Sierra, are you with us? I'm here. Good. Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining us. So there's so much about you. I hardly know where to start. But I think one of the most interesting uh, points in your bio that I just read is that you are a spirit rescuer. And for the people that are listening tonight, um, maybe you can elaborate on that. Tell us about what you do as a spirit rescuer. Okay, as a spirit rescuer, what we do is we rescue earthbound spirits. Um, Spirits are always around me, and they're always coming through. But um, I work with a whole entire remote team, and our remote team is gathered up with uh, my team members all having a traumatic experience like I did with my haunting. And um, what we do is we're go-to people for um, not only our client, but for many paranormal teams that run into a problem with an earthbound spirit. We also go in and we clear and we teach the clients how to not let this happen. We give them those tools that they need. So wherever I go, it seems like I I pick up spirits and sometimes they just stand in line wanting to talk to me. Now, mostly what we do is with traumatic depth, meaning that if, for example, it's a car wreck or, you know, it's something traumatic where it's just a sudden death where they're here one minute and they're gone the next. We also handle the unfinished business. If they want to get a message to their family, we do that as well. Mm-hmm. And so we do really a lot of things when it comes to spirit rescue. It's not just rescuing that earthbound spirit. It's also working with the spirit and sending messages to the family from the spirit. So are you... Um, talking to the spirits, not only giving uh, messages, but are you moving them forward into the light? Of course we are. Uh-huh. Um, uh, you know, we've done um, the Oklahoma bombing site where we went to, o- where I went to Oklahoma. When I first started this, this all, this all happened from a haunting when I was a skeptic, and it just I 
promised God, you know, if, if he would get me out of my haunting, then I would dedicate my life to helping those being haunted. Oh, that's and amazing. And it just kind of escalated. It just kind of escalated from there. So I got a mentor because people don't understand when you go through a haunting, especially as a skeptic, you have no one to turn to. Nobody believes you. I went through spiritual counseling. I went through all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I realized, and some people, this is it. You can't clear or anything like that because it's their lesson that they need to learn. So uh, I, I actually went through a lot to get to where I am today. Well, what about this haunting that you went through? Can you share briefly with us a little bit about that? Yes, um, my haunting was in 2004, and it was in an apartment complex in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, it, it was really bad. It started with this urgency to pull off the side of the road, find the cemetery in Thurber, Texas, which was a ghost mining town. Well, when I found the cemetery, I was really, my heartstrings were pulled on, and it was actually a cemetery with 700 unmarked 700 unmarked graves of children that died in you know the late 1820s to 1921 of childhood diseases i didn't know i was just so pulled to the cemetery at the time that i took a piece of a headstone i didn't know that you're not supposed to do that at the time because like i said i was a skeptic but my haunting escalated from there i ended up taking the the headstone back to the girl and I kind of adopted the cemetery and cleaned it up and made a promise that I would always be there if the children needed me. Well, one night I saw 11 children in my living room and I freaked. Oh, wow. I mean, I I didn't know what was going on. So my husband and I decided that we were going to go get a Ouija board and communicate with these children. So we did that off of the Toys R Us shelf and we didn't know anything about you know, protecting ourselves or closing the board or anything like that. So at first the child came through and I was talking to her. But then other things happened too. We were doing shots of crown with the Ouija board, which I didn't know at that time. That just opens you up even more. Well, finally a spirit came through. His name was Ron, and he died in the Twin Towers. And um, he told me that he had fallen off of a ladder. And, you know, I believed him because everything that I've, I was asking, he was validating. And at the time, my living room was dedicated to 9-11. Uh -huh. So uh, I found myself more and more isolated with the board. I just, every chance I got, you know, I would get on and I would talk. Well, turned out that it wasn't somebody, it wasn't, it wasn't earthbound. It wasn't anything like that. What it was, was an incubus. So mm. my haunting escalated from the incubus to being attacked 24-7. And, and when I talk about an incubus or a circubi, incubus is one that rapes a woman, you know, that, that sexually assaults the woman. Right. So, uh, it, it, you know, it got to where I'd lay in bed in the covers. You could feel it coming up. And I didn't know at the time, and I preached this, that you feed, if, if you have fear, then you feed the incubus and I had no clue about that and I remember crying just crying in my bed leave me alone things started happening I closed off my entire apartment I was actually staying in my living room at the time and it got to the point where a dark shadow chased me down my hallway and it was very heavy people that came to my apartment told me they couldn't breathe in my apartment because the air was so heavy. I literally believed that the pits of hell was opened. So um, he chased me into my living room, I mean into my bedroom, and I jumped on my bed and I remember being so scared and crying and praying to God, just help me, help me. And I got no help whatsoever. I even put on my window, angels help me please. And I was journaling, doing automatic writing, which I didn't even know I was doing. Hmm. So it got to the point one day where I went to a metaphysical shop because I wasn't going home. I used to sit in an IHOP restaurant from 12 to 6 a.m., so scared to even unlock my door in my apartment to go in there. And um, they gave me some tools, so I went home. And see, what I teach the client now is they read your thoughts. They know exactly what you're thinking, so you have to change your plan at the very last minute, and that's what I did. And I, I was led to put a circle of candles around, and I had a razor in my hand. It was either I'm going to take myself, I'm going to end this by slicing my wrist, or 
I was going to fight back. Well, I decided to fight back, so I put it, I was led to put a circle of candles, tea candles around, mm-hmm. and I jumped into it, and I had gospel music on my computer, and I remember humbling myself before God, just saying, please, please get me out of my haunting. I promise I will dedicate my life to those being haunted, and that was 10 years ago, next year. Wow. So um, I woke up, and it was it was weird because all the can- tea candles were completely burnt down, and um, I woke up in the fetal position, and it was over. And I remember opening my hand because I'd gotten a peace stone rock from uh, the metaphysical store, and in the rock was this face and a gargoyle inside my hand. So it was over, but it took me another three years to understand what happened to me because every time I something even brushed against me that I couldn't see, I would freak, literally just freak. It's happening again. It's happening again. Well, it turned out that all these gifts during my haunting was training me to do what I'm able to do today. In other words, spirit rescuer that has the, that knows the different energy signatures that come along with spirit make yeah. a good spirit rescuer. So I wrote a book, which is being published in 2014, and I revamped it, and I lined myself back up, and and that's exactly what I've done. I, I put a whole team together through my Networking Spirit Rescuer site, all having traumatic experiences like mine. So we're known all over the world as spirit, as well, I'm known as the real life ghost whisperer, but we're known all over the world as spirit rescuers. And we've never charged for anything that we've done because I believe if a family is being haunted, then they need that help. Now, what was the the book title that of the book that you're writing that's going to be published? Well, I self published it now. It's going to be published and we've revamped it completely and it's called through the eyes of a spirit rescuer the incredible journey begins and it takes you through my haunting because when i went through my haunting when i was writing the first chapter in my book i revisited my apartment and talked to my neighbors about the activity that had gone on after i left my apartment so um and then you know i traveled to alaska and New Hampshire, when I'm led to go somewhere, I go, because there's always a reason while I'm, why I am there. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, it goes by Sierra Sky, and what Sierra Sky means, which is my name in the paranormal world, it's the mountains leading to heaven, which means they go through me, and I send them on to healing. So, uh, I've been dedicating my life ever since. That is really very interesting because um, I work with Kevin Keel and we do um, demonology. So we do basically the same thing. I didn't realize how much alike it actually is. So, boy, I applaud yeah. you. That is no easy task. And it really takes a lot of focus and uh, determination, a huge amount of dedication of our lives because it does encompass so much time. Um, right, that's but- awesome. Yes, well, what I did was I got with a mentor, Amma Nazra, and she is the one when I thought the demon came back, it was actually another one. You have to understand, when I came out of my haunting, I had three attachments attached to me. Yeah, that can and what happen. People don't under, what people don't understand is, though you may be haunted in your house, if it's an attachment, it's going to go everywhere that you go. Mm-hmm. So we we tried to teach that as well, but what she taught me was, that you get in and you get out. In other words, when we clear a house, we keep it simple. We get in, we get out. We leave no room for error. It's just that quick, and it's gotten to be with me after almost 10 years that it's just a one, two, three process. It's very, very simple for me. In the beginning, I I didn't have a team under me, and I was doing this 24-7 and working full-time as well. So... It was like I never got any rest, but as I put my team together, and we're a remote team, meaning that we don't have to be on location to clear a house or to help a family or even in another paranormal investigation team. We can do it strictly from where we are. 
That is amazing. Um, I'd really like to talk more about that. We've got to take a quick break here. So for those of you listening, don't touch that dial. We'll be right back with more from Sierra Sky. Four thousand seven hundred and thirty four UFO sightings in two thousand seven. Eight hundred and fifty four abductions by aliens or unknown species reported by American and British citizens. Press information about collisions with passenger aircraft and UFOs that has been kept from the public knowledge for years. And only one trusted source on information from some of the top UFO researchers in the world. Exclusive information that cannot be found anywhere else on the planet. Trusted, connected, accurate. The UFOstore.com. Expand your personal library with fast shipping and instant downloadable information from the largest selection of UFO products on the internet by going to theufostore.com or call on the 24-hour, 7-day-a-week order line at 541-523-2630. The truth is out there, and theufostore.com has it. My name is Michael the Fourth, and I'm the lead investigator for the Seekers Paranormal Society. About seven years ago, I had my first paranormal experience. Now armed with the latest in paranormal equipment, I'm setting out to find the truth. Joining me on my quest to capture evidence is my equipment tech, Ramon Beavis, and investigator Steve Welk. Take a front seat into our paranormal world as we are driven into the unknown. We are Seekers Paranormal Society. SeekersParanormal.com Welcome back to EA Radio. And wow, it continues. This is just really interesting stuff here. Um, We were talking about uh, Sierra clearing a house with her team when she does it. And... um, You don't even have to leave the house. You don't have to leave the house to clear someone else's house. I'd like to hear about that, Sierra. Share that with us. Okay, well, with my team, you understand this is a promise that I made to God. And um, it's amazing how, how my team has come together. What we do is when a client gets a hold of me, and usually they're, it, it, they've gone through so much turmoil, is... Um, what we do is I automatically, first thing is ask for pictures. On my team, I have Marley's, and she, I've been working with her for eight years, and she reads the pictures to me. And we take the necessary steps that we need to take. There she goes in, the spirit comes forward, she finds out who's there, she finds out what's going on. And see, before I used to do this all myself. So after we've actually done the picture reading and we go back and forth because spirit comes to me and comes to her and we validate what we're getting, then I take the necessary steps. Either I go to Cindy Cindy Lepore, who is my main clearer, or I go to Scott Thompson, who is my demonologist. And we work from there. Scott is the astral traveler, so what he does is he travels into the house Mm -hmm. and he does the hands-on work. And then Cindy also does the same thing. So it depends on who I can get to first or where I'm led to and which team members that I'm going to use. Now, my team consists of probably 10 people right now that are all over the United States. So it depends on the case. And then what we do is we go in, we clear. I strictly work with the client now. I don't have to do all of that anymore if I don't want to. Sometimes I'm compelled to. Like I just had a case in California that I can't really go into a lot of details, but he contacted me through my personal website, and this is just my site where my bio came from, and he tried to get a hold of many other people, but mine was the only email that was allowed to go through. Usually when we have a client like that, our response is immediately, I immediately get on it. I don't let them wait because I know what it feels like to be haunted and to be alone and to be going through all of this. Exactly. So from there, we do the pictures, and then we go to my demonologist or to Cindy, and we get it done. Usually, it's a real quick thing. My my mentor taught me that you keep things simple. You get in, 
you get out, there's no room to make any mistakes. Now, when I do this, I go through my spirit guides. And, you know, because we handle such bad energy a lot, this is just on the clearing, what we do is uh, I ask my guides to bring only that of the light in. That way they hold everything dark back so I'm not manipulated and I, I can understand what is going on through my guides. But it's a very easy process for us because we've been doing it for so long, Mm -hmm. you know. And I know this is my path, and I've humbled myself on my path for years. Mm -hmm. And my main goal is to help those being haunted. And it seems like as we move forward, there are more and more people that are having paranormal activity going on. So my job is basically is I want to clear. I want to bring peace to the family, and I want to teach them the tools of not letting this happen again. Yeah, that's definitely um, exactly what we do, you know. Uh, And I I have some questions. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, Have you ever had anything um, attack you while you've gone in and gone out? Is that what you mean, get in quickly and then go out quickly? Yes, uh, nope. I can actually say in the 10 years, knock on wood, that after my haunting, because I know all the energy signatures, I've never had a problem again. And well, uh, we handle a lot of different cases. We had a case just this past Sunday, and um, we went to the home and cleared it. There was absolutely no problem. But we had brought someone with us that um, actually was influential in setting the entire appointment up. And when we dropped her back off at her home, we went in just for a moment to visit, sing a couple carols on the piano. And um, as I was walking through one of her rooms, um, she and Kevin were in front of me and someone grabbed my shoulder and squeezed it. And it was very prominent. And I was trying to think to myself, now who would grab my shoulder from behind me? I can see her and Kevin in front of me, so who's behind me? And I said right out loud, who is that touching me? And as I turned around, of course, there was no one there. And um, that's when she said, oh, well, I've never told you this. Of course, I've never been to her house before. But she said, I've never told you this, but there's a ley line in my house. And um, there's a woman that appears on this ley line and walks back and forth on this line from her mother's bedroom into the kitchen. And she said, uh, I think it was possibly the woman that grabbed you by the shoulder. And and I, you know, I immediately rebuked that and said, um, you know, uh, you may not touch me. And, you know, you may not interact with me. And I created boundaries immediately and uh, sent her on her way. I was very surprised that something like that happened. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, if if you move from one location to where you, you were working on a case and you were going to another location, a lot of people, I come across a lot of people that have that kind of activity, especially from ley lines. Now, when we talk about you did the right thing, but we also have to understand that nothing has the right. I don't care. Nothing has the right to violate your space. That is important. So you did the right thing, whether you rebuke, rebuke it or you just say, back up from my space. You're not allowed to invade my space. You, You definitely did the right thing. And that's what people don't understand is, you know, when... I don't understand why people provoke. I have a very hard, hard problem. Oh, I do too. When people provoke a spirit because what they're doing, yes, they may want a signing sign, but you don't have to provoke a spirit to get that sign from spirit. All you have to do is ask. So, you know, you, you did exactly what I would have done. Mm-hmm. Um Why she was there sounds to me like, you know, it had to do probably either with the house or with the land. I find a lot of cases where a lot has to do, though it's not with the house, it has to do with ley lines, and it has to do with portals, and it actually has to do with the land. Now, there's a difference between residual energy and an actual 
spirit coming forward. So you have to kind of figure out, okay, is this residual? Is it happening over and over and over again? Or is this actually an intelligent one that is interacting with you at the time? So, and when you can, this is important for, for paranormal investigators or anybody else. When you communicate with spirit, keep it simple. Go with the first thing that you hear. Because if you start questioning yourself on, did I hear that? Is this what you said? Then it leads, opens you up for nothing but confusion. So when I teach and I mentor, because I'm, I'm getting ready to teach others how to spirit rescue, I have a major, major goal that I want to do. I'm not going to go into what my goal is. But, you know, so if you keep it simple, you go with the first thing that you hear from spirit. Ask your guides. Is this true or is this not? Your guides aren't going to lead you wrong. Yeah. So if you keep it, you know, I can't stress that enough, especially with clearing. When we clear a house, I strictly work with Archangel Michael. He is the only Archangel that I work with because I know that Michael, during my haunting and when I was journaling or automatic writing, which I don't do anymore because I have such clear hearing, I went back and read when I was closing out my haunting chapter in my book and Michael's name came across my book many, many times that told me later that though we feel like we're alone when we're going through something traumatic like that, Mm -hmm. we're not necessarily alone. Right. So it's really, go ahead. Oh no, I was just, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah, we're never alone and the room is usually full of angels. (laughs) We just don't always Always. see them. (laughs) Now let me ask you something. For those who are listening, um, how could they get in touch with you? I know you're a co-host of the Spirit Rescuers blog talk radio, but do you have a site that you could share with the listeners? Sure. First off, you can get me on Sierra Sky on Facebook, but I also have a Spirit Rescuers fan page on Facebook as well. But I have a network inside that teaches many different tools, which is www.spiritrescue.ning.com. And that site was actually created on a vision on 111 of 08. I nested it and nested it and brought it up on 111. So there are many different ways that you can get a, get a hold of me. Also, my personal site. But I wouldn't recommend emailing me on my personal site. If, if you have a problem or if you need to get in touch with me, then I would go through the fan page or either I would go through my uh, Sierra Sky. Just email me. Okay. And, and trust, and- trust, trust If somebody needs help, I'm going to pick it up. <laughs> Good. Yeah, you'll be led to it. And what about your yes. blog talk radio? Blog talk radio was actually brought up when we um when I first published my book that we're getting that we revamped and published again. I no longer co-host uh Spirit Rescuers Radio. In fact, it just sits there because that was a path that I don't want to go back into co-hosting. What I would like to do is radio shows and be a guest on radio shows so that I can teach others or even just talk about my haunting. But it lines me back up with getting the word out there on these things can happen to you. And it gets me out there doing radio shows to where if somebody is going through a haunting, then they can get a hold of me immediately after the radio show and we can go in and clear that, whatever is going on. So I kind of, Spirit Rescuers, Blog Talk Radio is just kind of sitting there for right now. I may go back at some later date, but I think my schedule is is getting to be really, really busy, especially with 2014 coming up. So it just kind of sits there, but I have more of a pull to, to be a guest on other radio shows to get this word out there. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, like ours, Enigmatic Anomalies exactly. Radio. <laughs> We're certainly exactly. glad to have you. <laughs> um, well, also, you you started out just be being a paranormal investigator. Is that right? I actually put my team together. Um, even, I had an infield team, too, when I was in Texas. So I became a paranormal investigator as I learned Spirit Rescue from my mentor. And... 
it was more for me to understand what happened to me during my haunting. In order for me to understand what happened to me, I had to go back in and investigate. And then I just found myself being called to all these different places to investigate. So I started doing that. Now, what I'm thinking about doing is as I went through a divorce in 2013, I lined myself back up and got all the negative out of my life so that I can go with 2014. And I've been really, really led to do maybe another infield team, but it depends on how much work I have to do as to if I'm going to do that again, because my main goal is spirit rescue and clearing up the world. You There's know, an awful lot of clearing up that needs to be done out there. That's for sure. <laughs> that there is. Oh, I, I can't even begin to tell you um, what I want to do, but I haven't done it yet. It's just these things that come to me that, okay, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this because it needs to, the world needs to be healed. Um, Earthbound spirits, they need to go into healing. They don't need to be trapped. They can't move forward if they're trapped. Now, I will say with my Clara, and this is something that she does that I just, I wish I could do, and I'm going to learn how to do this. But when we clear a house, if there is bad energy there, what she does is she puts it into a containment hold in place for further education and further healing. Our success is when they go into containment, into a holder, they can't get back out. And I notice a lot of clients that that fear kicks in, and most of the time it's just a residual thing because it takes time for that residual to decrease, especially have to go in through a horrific haunting like that. So I believe that every spirit that is earthbound needs to go into healing. Another example would be um, the Newport, Connecticut shooting. Well, when that when the shooting happened, what I did, I called on the children that I had rescued in the past to meet them and to carry them into the light. I put it on Facebook. I put it out there. Because that was the message that I was getting. So what I do is I have conduits that I use uh, that I've already crossed over. Like if it's, an, uh, let's say, an Indian case. Let's say that the Indians and it's the land, like in Colorado or wherever. I've rescued our found Indians as well that were afraid to go into light because of the white man and what white man did. So I call back on those to escort them. Or what you probably do is when you rescue a spirit, you call on their family to come forward. Once the spirit sees their family, they're going to go. So, you know, there's a lot of, depending on the uh, case, there's a lot of different solutions that me and my team use to reunite and get them into healing. Right. Wow. <laughs> Lots of information. I'm, I'm a little taken back there by the containment. Um, usually we move spirits right into the light. I didn't know about containment, so that's really an interesting concept. I'm sure others have heard about it. I just haven't. But um, that's amazing. Um, what I'd like to do, because we're running so short on time, this time has just gone by so fast. Um, I, I want to thank you, first of all, so much for being with us and uh, sharing your story uh, on Enigmatic Anomalies Radio. Um, but uh, can you just give the call letters one last time for any of the listeners so that they can contact you? Sure. Um, like, like I said, you can just punch in Spirit Rescuers on um, Facebook, and we have a fan page that um, I'm always on it, and so are my admins, because I have a whole admin team, too, that takes care of the things that I don't have time to take care of. Or you can email me under Sierra Sky on Facebook, though my Facebook is always completely congested with uh, friends. You can still get emails across to me. Or my Spirit Rescuers Network inside, which is www.spiritrescue.ning.com. If it's an emergency case, privately email me at tdakota1962 at yahoo.com because I check that mail every day, several times a day. Okay. Well, boy, if you ever get to the Tampa Bay area, we would love to have you here on Enigmatic Anomalies TV. Um, we do radio as well as TV, and uh, we'd love to have you um, be a guest with us here. 
So please uh, keep that in your mind. <laughs> and it was so good speaking with you tonight. Um, I want to say to all the listeners, Happy New Year. This is our New Year's, uh, pre-New Year's, I guess, uh, New Year's Eve um, radio broadcast that we're doing today with Sierra Sky. And unfortunately, the time has just run out on us. So um, thank you again, and thank you all for listening. And everybody, have a happy new year. And thank you so much for having me on the radio. You're very welcome. Happy new year. Thank you. For hundreds of years, those that have been curious enough to look to the stars in search of something beyond ourselves have been shunned, persecuted, and laughed at. Now, it's time for those curious few to laugh back. Saucer Seekers is a hilarious online comic strip that takes a humorous look at our world of disinformation while facing everyday life from the point of view of those who devote their lives to the search for the truth. The Saucer Seekers! TheSaucerSeekers.com